maybe invite the three of you to the front. Um, maybe I'll come a little bit closer. It's um, kind of gender specific, the shoes, but I'll just sit here. Uh, you can choose uh, your walking shoes, yeah. Did you purposely put on the shoes that you normally walk in? I know Andy does. These are your walking shoes because you made a walk today, right? Yeah. Should okay, yeah. Yes, home? maybe, yeah. Anyone and maybe you can share one and then yes. we have another Oh, no, yes. there's another one. Yes, sir, he's bringing another microphone as well. So maybe I can ask more or less the questions we asked the audience in the beginning. Do all of you use maps? Are there moments that you use maps or don't use maps for walking? Absolutely. Absolutely, Absolutely you do. Yes, yes. Ah, yeah, is. because I would think that you specifically would not use no, maps. I, I totally love the the technique of the derive of this getting lost on mm -hmm. purpose or walking with wrong maps um, through places. No, the old situation. Wrong is maps, it? you mean? Wrong, wrong. Old wrong. maps or no, no. Just like I mean, the city of Sonesky, the born. Uh, I mean, I once read that it is actually a myth and it never happened. But they were using a, a map of Paris to walk through the Harz, a German uh, okay. forest mountain area. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Displaced. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think they just wanted to sound cool. They never did it. But um, the idea that you have a map and you just follow it, nevertheless, it is not the place where you are. Yeah, yeah. Just to see, just to confuse you, all the way to go to alienate your relationship to a map. Yeah. Andy, I believe, do you frequently use maps or...? Only when really necessary, uh, I would say, because uh, yeah, some, somehow I, I prefer just to take the time to go along, you know, and see what happens, especially if I arrive in a new area, a new city, mm -hmm. and I try to orientate and somehow find my way back and circle movement or something. Yeah, I like okay. just to walk without maps somehow. Yes, too. Yeah. because quite often I think people suggest walking paths to you, or how does it work? Um, for example, well, for the, yeah, for the trage wege, how does it work? Yes, yeah, so that's maybe why I'm not so much into maps, because my work is all about maps, <laughs> okay. you know, so um, my work uh, consists in uh, mapping uh, pathways, so all kinds of uh, tracks and trails and paths for pedestrians and, and bikers, so every day we're more or less into that, so um, of course, it's important because uh, you know it's all about uh, how uh, the landscape is uh, uh, made for for movement for for walkers and bikers. So uh, yeah, but then you're distracted by the map. Yeah, there you. we go. <laughs> yes. Folding on maps, oh cool, yeah, the old ones, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Serkan, um, because um, for example, I think, and you've of course started with. A possible path, but I think photography or your previous practice as a photographer, how did it, that work? Did it make you walk, or how did it, those two influence each other, like in the very beginning? Yeah, I mean, uh, photographic practice itself is uh, very much based on, especially street photography practice, is very much based on uh, walking. I mean, uh, so, and during the uh, uh, ten years of my uh, photography practice, I've been walking a lot, and that's uh, also a very efficient tool to put your nose into any certain uh, areas you know okay. that you cannot yeah. easily access. You know that's a good tool for me or a key. Yeah. For, that was a very key, good key for me to access so all the, these points. So the visual was like, leading you yeah. along. Uh, so, so it became like a, uh, more like a research uh, method for me uh, uh, after doing this uh, walks. <coughs> Nowadays I do mm -hmm. photography, but I don't exhibit any anymore. Yeah. yeah. Preparing this talk, I thought we would also talk about nature mostly, but I think we most we the the we well our let's say our um, our heavy point or, or the axis is more about urban walking or the verge of urban walking, right? And especially if we talk about a Belgian context, we actually cannot escape city 
uh, well, a city yeah. context, Ali? Yeah, Can true, true. I mean, I think if we look at uh, Flanders or this area, it's hard to make a clear distinction between something like uh, the countryside or the rural areas and, and the urban areas or the cities. Maybe before we had this more concentrated urban areas or compact cities, which uh, when they become bigger, they, they somehow inflated and they just stayed somehow concentrated and the rest around it was countryside. Maybe this has existed for some period, but at least since the, I, I think, 1950s or 60s, the urbanization has been spreading, you know, the urbanization has been spreading in a different way and not like uh, continuing in, in some uh, compact uh, city centers, but it's more like spreading in a network way. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, with, the, with the, the construction of roads, of course, you had all these uh, construction uh, next to the roads, you had the commuters who uh, were, were going to live much further from the city centers. So you have a much more diffuse and decentralized urbanization, so that it actually, you know, people kind of live everywhere. And there's Which a, is very specific for Belgian, uh, for Belgian landscape. In a way, but it's yeah. also, I mean, uh, in Italy, northern Italy, in uh, the Ruhr area, in, uh, in, uh, in Germany, and even in Holland, and areas of France, and it's, it's somehow, uh, it has somehow been a model of urban development more, more larger than, than, than Belgium, but especially, uh, for sure, in Flanders, it's, uh, it's the whole er territory is somehow urbanized, mm -hmm. one could say, yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you walk for pleasure, because you still walk for pleasure, right? Mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> so, where do you, do you look for nature, or do you look for this interesting mix, mixture of both, or do you go, go specifically to uh, cities to walk, or where do you walk yourself? As well, a professional walker or something. <laughs> professional, so yeah. For yeah, let's say I I started to enjoy walking when I when I was a student somehow, you know, in the in the city, and then uh, I started to go always further from the city center, you know, because I wasn't much interested in uh, the city uh, centers and and the the walking tours which were uh, clearly marked, etc. So I started to you know somehow explore around and always going a little bit further, and then I, I had one year studying in, in Strasbourg, which was uh, next to the border with Germany, and then you had the Rhine River, and then you could cross it, and you come in uh, Kiel, and it, it's a very nice area. And there I started to have uh, the taste somehow of the peri-urban areas, or the fringe areas, and also the, you know, the abandoned factories and stuff like that, and the post-industrial landscape. So I kind of started to enjoy that, and um, ever since I, I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. roaming around in this kind of, it's not really countryside, not really city center, but somewhere in between. Yeah. David, for you, the city is quite important, or the, or, but well, let's say human, what, what humans leave or build or make and... Well, no, I mean the humans the themselves, I mean what is the, one of the big, today we had a walk uh, in the countryside, I would say, uh, definitely countryside, even though there was, herb, like there were I mean, there was civilization, it's not just nature, no, there's like uh, small villages and uh, so. But what is uh, such a huge difference is that you barely meet anyone. Uh, but when you walk through a city, you meet a lot of people and uh, you're just in a social context. And um, my walks that I organized or designed or composed or choreographed or however, uh, I sometimes call social choreographies ex ex exactly because of this fact that you are always in relationship to other people doing other kind of choreographies uh, that are maybe more designed by the streets of a city, by urbanism, by uh, the idea how we have to walk through cities and uh, which is, so the techniques that I use and propose are more opposing uh, other, um, yeah, things that, yeah, are more opposing uh, like the natural rules that seem to just appear in cities than that they would, uh, um, that they would be like so context uh, specific or site specific that it is really about this one staircase and this one mm -hmm. tree and this one bridge and this one. So it's much more about how to use space than really about the space itself. Yeah, like for example, to inappropriately use stairs. Inappropriately use stairs or like, yeah, exactly, yeah, like mi misusing things. I love walking through shopping malls, which I've definitely designed uh, to give us a certain feel of how to, um, like slide into uh, consumerism, 
um, but that doesn't take, and they use kind of entertainment for this, or like uh, beauty codes and decoration, and, uh, but then in the end you're supposed to buy it and shop in this good field, uh, uh, feel good things. So I have done a lot of uh, also audio guides for shopping malls, for example. Uh, because actually it is possible to misuse the spaces, use them for other uh, purposes and uh, maybe kind of twist the whole idea of entertainment around into a real experience. And uh, this I find just simply funny to just like, um, just really deliberately misunderstand the meaning of uh, certain symbols and signs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, of course, I, if I am, um, you talk about the people around, <laughs> Uh, when you walk or the social uh, space, but I think your performances or the walks are a quite lonely act for people. Is it, is it designed? That sounds so sad. Yeah, um, not necessarily, not necessarily, but uh, yes, yes. Even well. though you enjoyed your time lonely in this tent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, or I mean, of solitary, solitary, solitary yeah, I know. I mean, the audio guides are a little bit different than the, the group's choreographies that are organized because uh, audio guides, indeed, like with a group, you somehow get yourself all the time out of concentration. And uh, something I always found a little bit boring about sound walks, we discussed that uh, today also, is that this rule of like, we don't talk. So I try to find other techniques to make people to not reach the level of reflection already before the experience has happened. Mm -hmm. But if we both walk through a city, we would immediately say, like, ah, look at this and look at this. So like the whole reflection would have started, the meta level is there directly. Yeah. Um, so techniques and group walks, what we did today, for example, what I do sometimes, I individualize people just by saying, like we walk on a dis with a distance of eight meters between each other, like just the moment, like this, like too far to talk. Even, th even though some people still shout it. Uh, <laughs> but, but do you prefer that people do it? Is, it? is it something to do on your own or is it, do you make... I mean, no, you know, it's, it's, it's a difficult question because like I'm, I mean, I'm keen on the things that I propose, but I'm also very keen on that people misuse also my rules again. Mm -hmm. So I have a little bit of conflict answering this, uh, this question because I, I like to be treated badly in that sense. On the other hand, I'm I don't want to be the witness of it, so like I <laughs> yeah. leave an audio guide and I pull myself back, and then people just bastardize the whole work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little bit like uh, you said, Sirkan, that that actually the the walk um, uh, has become an autonomous uh, work. Um, yeah, how is it? How is it going now? How did it develop now? Do you still get pictures like the ones from Rob? Uh, actually, I missed to mention that no, uh, it has been set, uh, around six years. Uh, it's still going on, uh, as you told, it's an autonomous uh, act anymore, so I don't have any more control on it. Mm -hmm. So uh, it has been uh, uh, some, like 30 group walks have took place, uh, around a thousand people walk, I think, wow. already. Yes. And, and, it, and also, uh, it has been given as a supplement of a National uh, Geographic magazine. So, and it's been already <laughs> out of artistic context, so 50,000 copies of being distributed. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's... Of the map, you mean? Of the map. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, so that's important about to collect the uh, memory of it, you know, like, uh, at the moment when you put the map, it's not mo anymore... Uh, it, it is already in the collective memory, it's, people are walking on it, so it's kind of a civil obedience uh, against uh, your, your the construction process you know so mm -hmm. and the, the image that I showed is all, all collected from the walkers I mean some people are collecting these images and making a database of it from yeah like you collected photos from yeah, Rob's Instagram yeah, yes so how did you feel about it is it okay for you that uh, oh, yeah. Serkan shows it uh, oh yeah yeah well, okay yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, but is it then still, if the map is so widespread, is it, do you still feel it's political? Do you still feel, uh, because you made it because, yeah, very, from a very political standpoint? Um, How can you distinguish it? Uh, that's <laughs> that's yeah, another yeah. question, you yeah. know, like, so, I mean, uh, so, uh, yes. I can give you this example. Some of the, some people doesn't even know it's about a political act or a social act, so they just want to have a day of uh, leisure in the yeah. outskirts of Istanbul, and that's still fine. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, so uh, I, I don't try to distinguish what, which, which one is political and which one is... Because on the map itself, it is explained as this is the route that uh, the canal would have been yeah. or should be. Yeah, <coughs> yeah but uh, I not and none any word in the map is mentioning about the canal. Okay. Yeah, because once you mention the canal, then you legitimize it. So you, you never use the word in canal in the map. Okay. So it's indirectly mentioning about it's going to be the yeah. line between two seas. That's also resembling about what do, what do you do between two seas? You walk, you do canal, you do what? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So it's just a proposal to do something between two seas. Okay, and, so, and you don't mind that people walk it without knowing it's your fine. intention? It's yeah. fine, it's fine, because it, it ju- just uh, gives uh, importance to the periphery of the city, which is highly neglected since you were speaking about the future at the very beginning because and you were already talking about the periphery because mm-hmm. the periphery of the city in terms of cities like Istanbul is the future of the city actually because it's expanding so high uh, so fast yeah. so you know and it's they are highly neglected so uh, so that's why in order to have your rights about the cities it is uh, already a significant symbol to be there a tangible experience to be there is also uh, even important. So, exactly, yeah. yeah. Because, uh, yeah, when you were talking about periphery walks you were doing, I was like, that, that mustn't be nice to do, but why? I mean, exactly. I mean, and putting your body into a situation, no? That's all, it's just a very, it's different than asking people to go by car or something. I mean, you, sure. no, you I think the, this like putting your body, doing a certain kind of like really naive, uh, like, no, like yeah. really pure, how would you know, first degree kind of physical yeah. act, walking. I have to also think yeah. of the standing man at Taksim Square, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is just like the, this, the artist yeah. who would just stand still during yeah. the protests of, uh, and uh, just standing as a figure of, yeah, what actually, is it already protest or is it just yeah. like, act, and that's I think this whole idea of self-performance, which I kind of emphasize so often, <laughs> it's in there, the moment that you put your body into an act, uh, into a performative act, uh, there's already something changing, even though it's not yet something very politically yeah. mentioned at that mm-hmm. moment. Yes, because um, we haven't talked about it yet, but your work is also, you. there is also a political component in it. Ah, there's a question. In yes, it. there's a question. <laughs> yes, I mean, I, is, it? <laughs> is it? No, but for example, when you talk about the malls, eh, I guess, misusing a place. There is so much architecture out there that that's, is silently guiding us in some way. I'm sorry? I was thinking about the animals, the malls, because we talked about the malls. This the ma- yeah. malls. We're yeah. talking about the shopping malls. The shopping malls. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah. This, um, that's yeah, yeah, there is so Blindly much. Blindly shopping, that's also a bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I am thinking about, for example, the, the, the Swedish performer uh, that you showed us who was, uh, well, falling down in the financial district in, in New York. I can imagine it being a disturbing act in that uh, situation, but. Um, I think the, I mean, that's, that's an old, the old discussion of art is political, even though uh, without mentioning a polit- political subject necessarily. Mm-hmm. I think one answer in this discussion is that you give people somehow, you, you show ways of self-responsibility, self-activation, you somehow give, act, yeah, give the, the moment of action back to people, if art does this. I mean, art can do many things, but uh, especially art that is on this half performative uh, mm-hmm. level. I mean, it's performance art or is it like um, self-experiential exp- art? Uh, I think they're pretty close. I mean, standing, walking, uh, dancing, uh, you find it in, like we had like the walking, you showed like uh, demonstra- pictures of demonstrations and then we have uh, people just walking as a hiking, hikers, but then we had a lot of artists using walking. I mean, it's like, um, I think the, imp- the interesting part is where is the, the relationship to the audience. Like, do you make just people look at stuff or do you invite them to mm-hmm. do something? And uh, mm-hmm. this is also if we would put like these uh, examples of yours into categories, there's some that invited people to join and others they're just like there for the nice images. A lot of these 70s works, they're just like, they're just living on still by the images. Yeah. And uh, I think that art changed a lot there where people thought like, okay, we have to take the people on the hike if we want them to go through the same changes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that, that's maybe political. Yeah, exactly. For example, another 
well, small detail is the colors you use mm -hmm. uh, for your trail. Can you talk a, bit, a little bit about that? Why, what colors did you use and why? Yeah, that was the 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 the, the, uh, the orange one was the symbol of the Gezi movement, so mm -hmm. the Gezi protests, and the uh, blue one is the seas, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. That, that's also uh, resembling about how the uh, the relation between the Gezi movement and the uh, and the trail itself. Because if Gezi was not happened, nobody would want the trail. Because it was just a periphery trail. I mean, it was not being considered as like Grana Gier de Moutres, you know, like it, it's on the same form. But once the Gezi happened, it became like a social act. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, that uh, being embraced by people as a, uh, uh, as a tool to express themselves. Uh, so that's why yeah. uh, it, there's a close relation between uh, Gezi movement and this. Yeah. Because if people see orange, will they immediately recognize yeah, it? Yeah, some of them. Of, <laughs> yes. yeah. But you don't also don't explain explicitly. Yeah, no, never, never explain. No, yeah. never explain. That's, that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, I guess in the same way for you, you don't really explain why people have to knock on... You just make them do things. Heaven's door. Oh, heaven's door, or, or knock on, I don't know, poles and stuff. It's just a truly experience. I mean, they yeah, experience the... This a, yeah, this example, for example, walking, we have done this in Athens. Uh, just the same day there was a strike and yeah, Athens is still, um, it's like everything in public space is political there. And then we were walking around and hitting stuff in the shopping area. And of course, I wanted it to happen there because I thought it would be interesting <coughs> to misuse like uh, all these pillars and uh, whatever. And then uh, and there was a lot of police still around and they were definitely curious what we were doing there. But somehow we didn't do something wrong. So it's also, it's this, is on the verge of being also of being meant to be an, of being symbol symbolic mm -hmm. because it's also experiential and that is this question also like is it done for you for yourself or are you doing something again for others and um mm -hmm. yeah ex i don't know i don't know yeah, yeah. andy mm -hmm. um totally different question but we talk about maps we talk about hey there is some i have here the brussels tracks by you it's nice on paper with, with the instructions and all that um but of course there is the internet there is gps uh there is well google maps and all that how do you think um has it changed the walking experience and in what way do you think um for example for yourself um mm -hmm. how has the internet changed the walking experience um well the internet and i mean di digital technologies in, in general they they may have a huge impact and but in some in some way these technological devices they I mean especially today yeah there's of course the um, the GPS and, and the mobile phone and the smartphone but uh, there's also other technologies developing like there's a uh, smart clothing or there's a uh, wearable computers and stuff like this and what we see happening is actually that like you know, the it's a bit like walking techniques that used that were used before, like the shoes, like we saw in uh, one of the artworks, uh, the shoes, but also walking sticks and stuff like that, or maps or clothes, uh, walking clothes or walking gear. Actually, now uh, they become digitalized somehow, and it's, it looks like more and more uh, it will somehow be melting with the body or be connected with the body, like a, you know, like a prosthesis or something, like an extension of the body. And this is something uh, which is becoming, may have a huge impact. Um, so... It makes it impossible to get lost as well? Well, something like that. If it, it, nowadays already with the smartphone, if you're always online, uh, it's, it's possible to always be traced or tracked or something like that. Um, and also not only the, the walking experience, like uh, the body will, will change, but also the environment. Like you see already now, the. The environment uh, is getting much more enhanced with all kinds of uh, sensors and uh, displays and compu computational elements here and there and so somehow the environment will start to respond on uh, the, the moving body or the walking person you know so you will have this interaction between uh, your uh, augmented technologically augmented body and the technologically augmented environment so uh, and this will of course uh, have huge effects or could have huge effects 
uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. So and the whole thing, uh, the main ingredient for this is of course data, you know, and, and then the whole question, uh, the, the huge debate which is running today uh, about these data, who is having which data, who is having access to which data, um, etc. So the walking experience could get caught, caught, caught in to into this, uh, I don't know, this uh, technological revolution somehow, mm -hmm. where you're always somehow uh, uh, part of this data cycle. Uh. Exactly, and I think it, it maybe it might go both ways, that the idea of, well, walking as a act that brings you back to yourself, to your own thoughts, like a solitary act in the here and now. And on the other hand, well, that is, of course, a little bit disturbed because you are part of a <laughs> network that is following you. On the other hand, it becomes more social if you can s share it on social media, if you do it together. Um, that might be the bright side of it. Maybe a last question for you before I close. Well, what did you appreciate about each other practice? Have you heard something you didn't that... <laughs> yes, Andy, for example, what did you hear that... Uh, yeah, that triggered you, that uh, you thought, oh... Okay, okay well, <laughs> I was really happy to, have, to be with this... Uh, two guys and it's not a very gender mixed uh, walking crew but I try to put quite some uh, diversity in the presentation but yeah I was happy already to have the walk this afternoon and uh, I mean I, I knew a little bit what David was doing for example but not that well and uh, now I understand it a bit better and I can feel it, uh, it's really interesting. Um, also I mean the, what he said about uh, the collective and the individual uh, experience and how it uh, connects somehow you're in a group and not really you're somehow uh, alone uh, doing your introspective work but at the same time there's like this uh, choreography which is collective it's, it's really interesting um, also I mean the way how the bodily experience connects with the trace or the track on the ground like in the, the chalk on the on the ground is, is interesting so the path actually is there and then you have to embody it by walking it uh, which is uh, all kinds of interesting uh, I mean things so yeah it was really nice and then of course uh, Istanbul uh, it's all, I want to go there since so many years <laughs> and now I have uh, another reason to go and it looks really nice the, the walk and it's a very urban area I mean I saw these pictures I was like okay this is wonderful and uh, yeah it's, uh, it's a great initiative and uh, I like the, the timing and the political charge of it for sure it's a, it's a great gesture for for the city mm -hmm. so it's really nice um, and, and now nowadays these metropolitan trails uh, they, they they become something and we've seen the people in uh, marseille doing it but also in other cities so it becomes somehow more familiar for people to explore their surroundings for citizen uh, 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 urban people um, to start to appreciate uh, you know the immediate surroundings of their city mm -hmm. which is some, some something good also you know you don't have to fly uh, to the next uh, city trip uh, to, to go and discover something new you can somehow do it in your own city so exactly. I think it's a good it's an interesting movement um, mm -hmm. yeah Serkan, did you hear something tonight that you think oh I will take this along for my next project in Canada well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was <laughs> okay. So it was very great overview from Andy that I have not uh, uh, know a couple of uh, works that uh, uh, not know them before. And yeah, thanks for sharing them. Uh, and happy to come to Istanbul. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you both. <laughs> you know? I'm totally joining. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah, and uh, I mean, uh, uh, there are also uh, a couple of artists uh, uh, among my artist friends came to the walk and interpreted uh, doing performances. I have not get time to show them. So uh, and obviously, um, since I mean, this is. Uh, the tree of itself is sort of a facilitator, but it's open to any kind of performative act, and I'm happy always to collaborate with performative yeah. uh, actions, and it ins inspires me, obviously, David's things, and hopefully, uh, yeah, uh, one day <laughs> you come and do some, something. And knock on things. <laughs> this is an invitation. I'm very happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
So David, yeah, maybe maybe you, uh, do you have like a last thought? A last you, thought, I mean, I love this, this, the idea of subtle politics, like something that you, you, like you first do the act and then suddenly you discover politics after, I mean, mm -hmm. we spoke about it, how it interests me, but like this is so beautiful in that, in that walk, definitely. So, um, and I'm, I'm very curious to discover that myself, but already this idea of like, you, you don't talk about it, but actually it's happening. And actually you could know, you could always have known <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think that's very beautiful. Just by being present. Uh, by being, yeah, but no, like by put, putting your body into that. I mean, like uh, offering someone, uh, and also like kind of it's a, a subversive uh, gesture towards tourism also, which is so interesting. Not like you have like this beautiful map and you have like it is, it happens to be in like magazines and people just do a marathon in it. And everyone is just like, and actually if you tell them what it's about, then everyone would just say, yeah. yes, that makes so much sense. So yes. I think that's also great. And then here, I mean, obviously, I want to have this entire list of artists. Uh, yes, uh, I was uh, I was not proud about like how many of them I didn't know, uh, even though some I knew for sure. And but I'm getting very curious and curious and to your to your own walks uh, when you say like you walk these half areas, these in between areas. I'm very happy to join there. Yes, I suggest if you have questions for these three men, maybe you can ask them at the bar, because we ha need to have a little bit of time for Wiede, who has a... <laughs> I am not prepared. Oh, I, no. I, was, uh, I was walking with my mind, I'm sorry. So I only have this. this oh, there we go. I think you saw an urban trail. The, the great editor, but you I so think nice. they were all uh, shown already, wasn't it? No, we couldn't see it because we were sitting with our back okay. to you. Oh, yeah, so yeah, if yeah. you could show them again. <laughs> <laughs> but I think they will be published uh, in maybe or... Uh, you, I, I invite you to come and look at them. To walk over there. Yeah, I, I will show them with pleasure, but uh, okay, it will let's take some time to... In a little bit. Thank you. So thank you very much, Vida. This was the AZ Night number nine so far. Many thanks to our guests, Andy van de Vivere, David Helbig, and Serkan, uh, Serkan Taijan. Um, and of course, Vida Verknokke. And thank you for being here tonight um, on the behalf of the AZ Night partner, C33 Architectuurwijzer, MIA, our new partner, the fashion incubator located here in Hasselt. Uh, PXL Med School of Arts, uh, Lucas School of Arts Campus C Mine, and you hustle faculty at Van Architecture and Kunst who work together to make these evenings possible and the Flemish community for their financial support, of course. Good to know, Ciel Groma, who curated this evening, will, um, in the framework of Z33 research, will write a text based um, on what has said tonight and all the lectures have been filmed. So, of course, you can look back at the artists uh, that we all want to have now. and. Um, in a few days, you can read Seal's text on the website of AZ Nights and on the Facebook event page. Um, we have a little surprise for you, quite exclusively, if you go to um, Wim, who will be up behind the bar and make himself known. There is Wim. Wim has a few tickets, a few free tickets for a performance for First Contact by Nie Stedelijk. That is now Friday the 22nd and Saturday the 23rd here in this uh, in this place where we're sitting now. It's, um, it's a performance where Wiede made drawings for as well. And Stan Meuris um, <coughs> is playing music together with Joris Kaduwaerts and uh, Sarah Vertonge, the wonderful actress with a beautiful voice, will be there. So we have a few tickets for you reserved, so everybody who wants them, uh, go to Wim and he will write down your name. So that's a really nice thing. And so, well, uh, for the rest, no, I missed my so, and for the rest, yeah, last but not least, we hope to see you again in a month's time, the 23rd of April, with a new theme, a nice, diverse perspective, perspectives. It will be the 10th edition of AZ Nights, and we will uh, give voice to female impact in the world of fashion and design. Um, well, it seems that in the Me Too era, the prevailing gender roles are rewritten also in the world, world of art, design and fashion. So that's very interesting. Um, so we will talk to, uh, with uh, Pinar Demirdag, an artist from Dissidents, uh, from Dissidents exhibition at Z33, a young fashion designer from Antwerp, Flora Miranda, and Libby Sellers, an author uh, of the book Women Design, 
and the curator of a design museum in London. We organize this evening together with Mode Museum in Hasselt. And, um, and you will have a first exhibition ever on female designers. Not too soon, I guess, but called Wonder Women, Strong Women in Fashion. So let's go to the bar. Uh, you all received a token for drinks. So um, yeah, thank you so much for being here and see you next time.